This is a story told by Rabbi Bernie King. There is a true story of a father and a son, unbelievably true. The father, a Holocaust survivor, had lost his entire family. His son, Joey, born to a life of privilege, was at the age of rebellion. He had decided to go off to India in search of enlightenment. During a major argument, Joey said he was going to leave Judaism and become a follower of a guru. The father screamed at his son, telling him, leave, never return. He said that he never wanted to see him again. Many years later, Joey was still in India pursuing a spiritual path when he met an old friend. The friend told him that his father had died shortly after of a heart attack. Joey muttered to himself, it was not a heart attack that killed my father, but a broken heart. I killed him. Joey grieved bitterly. He had always believed that they would meet again and that they would reconcile. He longed to be able to hug his father and tell him just one more time how much he loved him, but now it was too late. Joey was certain of only one thing. He had to go to Israel. He had never felt completely comfortable with this spirituality. He experienced an overwhelming need to return to his roots. Upon entering Israel, he immediately went to the Kotel, the Western Wall. There, Joey meditated and tried to pray. His prayer, thick with tears, begged his father for forgiveness. How I wish I could tell you how much I loved you, how much I regret all the pain that I caused you. I didn't mean to hurt you. I was just trying to find my own way. You meant everything to me, Dad. Everything. I wish I could tell you that now. Through his tears, Joey noticed people placing notes in the crevices of the wall. There were countless thousands of these notes, some possibly going back a century or more. This was a way he could perhaps tell his father what he needed to tell him. He took a pencil and he wrote a brief note to his dad. Dear father, I beg you to forgive me for the pain I caused you. I loved you so much, and I will never forget you. And please know that nothing you taught me was in vain. I will not betray your family's deaths, I promise. Joey then searched for an empty crevice in which to place his note. It was not easy finding empty space. The wall was so large, yet the notes so many. After a time, he found a place in which he was barely able to cram his note. As he stuffed it into the crack, another note fell out. As Joey was about to return the note, he sensed something very strange about it, and he couldn't explain why, but he unfolded the note, his fingers shaking, and he started to read it. My dear son, Joey, if you should ever happen to come to Israel and somehow miraculously find this note, this is what I want you to know. I always loved you. Even when you hurt me, I will never stop loving you. You are and always will be my beloved son. And Joey, please know that I forgive you for everything and only hope you, in turn, will forgive a foolish old man. The note was signed with his father's name. A true story. A coincidence of miraculous proportions. Now, I am willing to bet that many of us in the sanctuary right now, many of us here, carry burdens from past relationships, whether the person has died or the person is still alive that we carry the pain of not feeling so great about the way that it ended or our last words to someone, their last words to us. And many of us replay those conversations in our heads. Sometimes we can't even sleep at night because we are in so much pain from the way that those relationships perhaps ended. 
And so this Torah portion this week talks about Jacob and Esau reuniting after years and years of not speaking to each other. Brothers, brothers who grew up together, not speaking to each other for years, completely torn apart of each other's lives, and here they are about to meet. And as I told you before, Jacob was feeling very afraid. He didn't know if Esau was going to try to hurt him or kill him. He was prepared with a big army. He thought that they were going to fight. And we know that Jacob struggled for years. And perhaps some of the struggle was the pain that he carried from not making peace with his brother. But ultimately, when they meet, we see one of the most beautiful moments in Torah. They embrace each other. They kiss each other. After all those years, after all the bad memories, they're able to give each other a hug and to look at each other's beautiful families and to hear a little bit about what's going on in each other's lives. But Torah doesn't tell us that they became best friends. It doesn't say, and then they marched off together and they were best friends and they were in each other's lives and it was like nothing ever happened. No, Torah doesn't say that. It says that they actually went their separate ways. And I think there's something really beautiful about that because it's very realistic, you know? Sometimes in life when we make up with others, when we have the courage to say sorry or to forgive, it doesn't mean that we are going to even stay in each other's lives sometimes. But we are still able to get that closure, get that sense of peace that maybe we have been craving or they have been craving that can lead both parties to walk away and to live holier, more peaceful lives because of that experience. And maybe sometimes we are able to get close again and be friends again and be family again, and that's great. But when we're not, there's still something beautiful about this story that shows that that peace and that wholeness, that sense of shalom is attainable. And we all carry all sorts of different memories of conflict and pain and we know that sometimes it may be too hard to forgive and maybe the circumstances were were very horrific but when we are able to forgive like Jacob and Esau were able to forgive each other and like the father and the son in this story it's not only a gift for the person who made a mistake but it's a gift for the person who's been carrying that anger So we hope that we can learn from these characters and realize how relevant this is in our own lives. Let's give ourselves that gift of peace by being able to reconcile and being able to forgive one who has hurt us. So I'd like to give you all just two minutes if you want to talk with those who are sitting next to you about why you think it can be powerful to forgive or you can talk about why it's so hard to forgive. So take, take two minutes to share those thoughts on this Shabbat. Thank you to everyone who shared, and I hope these are conversations that we continue outside the sanctuary as well, because these are definitely topics that we all go through in our lives. We all struggle with forgiveness, and I hope that the stories of our people can bring us some peace when we try to navigate those challenges. Shabbat Shalom.